I want to provide a brief overview of exchange rate determination. Now, you should recall that exchange rates are the price of one currency in terms of another. And if a currency depreciates, that means it declines in value. Appreciation means an increase in a currency's value. Uh, what factors determine the exchange rate? Well, they're determined by supply and demand for the currency. Now, before we can sort of talk about whether the number went up or the number went down as to whether it appreciated or depreciated, we have to consider how the exchange rate is quoted. Now, there are two ways to quote exchange rates. There's the direct quote. In this case, um, it is a foreign exchange rate involving a quote in fixed units of the foreign currency against variable amounts of the domestic currency. So, for example, a direct, direct quote of the Canadian dollar, um, U.S. dollar exchange rate in the United States would be, for example, 0.79394 U.S. dollars equals one Canadian dollar. So the Canadian dollar is the fixed quantity at one. In a direct quote, a falling number indicates that the domestic currency is appreciating. That is, it takes less dollars to buy one unit of the foreign currency. In this quote, it takes a little more than 79 cents to buy one Canadian dollar. If the exchange rate or the number fell to, say, 0.65, then it would only take 65 cents to buy one Canadian dollar. So, in this case, the U.S. dollar is appreciating and the Canadian dollar is depreciating. The other way to quote it is the indirect quote. And this is the reciprocal of a direct quote. Now, keep in mind, whether it's a direct or an indirect quote depends on which country you happen to be in. Um, I'm going to do these from a US perspective. Um, in this case, it tells us how much of the foreign currency is needed to buy one unit of the domestic currency. For example, an indirect quote of the U.S. dollar euro exchange rate would be $1 equals 0.9232 euros. So the dollar is the fixed amount and the euro is what's changing. In an indirect quote, a falling number indicates that the domestic currency is depreciating. That is, you're going to receive less euros for each dollar you convert, or it's going to take less euros to buy one U.S. dollar. And if the dollar is depreciating, then the euro is appreciating. Um, in terms of how these quotes are, the way they... Um, list them is the first currency is what's referred to as the base currency. So if you uh, type in euro dollar exchange rate into your browser, you're going to get the direct quote from the U.S. perspective. That is the number of dollars needed to buy one euro. And if you type dollar euro exchange rate, you will get the indirect quote, again, from the U.S. perspective the number of euros needed to buy um, one U.S. dollar. So comparing foreign currency spot rates, now um, if you're not familiar, spot rates are simply referred to the rates for immediate delivery. And if we're using the direct quote and we, pay, we pick two spot rates over two points in time, okay, time t and time t minus one, so the spot rate at time t is s sub t, and the spot rate at time t minus 1 is s sub t minus 1. Then the percentage change in the currency's value is s t minus s t minus 1 divided by s t minus 1. A positive percentage change indicates the foreign currency has appreciated. A negative value indicates it has depreciated. So here's a table that um, I took from Medora's International Financial Management uh, textbook, which just gives some numbers here. They give you the value of the Canadian dollar 
in terms of US dollars um, for different months. So from January 1st to February 1st, it went from 70 cents US to 71 cents US. So in this case, that is a 1.43% increase. That means the US, um, the Canadian dollar appreciated. In this case, then it goes back down to 70 cents, the Canadian dollar depreciated, et cetera, et cetera. Over here we have um, values for the euro. Okay, a dollar eighteen to buy one euro on January first. Now a dollar sixteen to buy one euro, and that's a negative percentage change, minus one point six nine, and that means the euro has depreciated. What factors determine the exchange rate between two currencies? Well, basic, basically supply and demand. So the exchange rate is a function of these factors here. Okay, Delta INF is the change in the differential between U.S. inflation and the foreign country's inflation rate. Um, Delta INT is the differential or the change in the differential between the U.S. interest rate and the foreign country's interest rate. Uh, delta INC is the change in the differential between the US income level and the foreign country's income level. And then Delta GC is a change in government controls. And Delta EXP is a change in expectations of future exchange rates. So I'm just going to focus on these uh, first three factors. Um, relative inflation rates. Suppose an increase in U.S. inflation leads to an increase in U.S. demand for foreign goods, right? Makes sense. If things are more expensive in the U.S., you'll buy them where they're cheaper. That will increase the demand for foreign currencies. If U.S. residents want to buy things from abroad, they're going to have to exchange their dollars to, for example, pound sterling, and this is going to increase the exchange rate for the foreign currency. The demand for the pound goes up, and therefore the amount of dollars it takes to buy one pound sterling goes up. So the pound has appreciated, the dollar has depreciated. A change in relative interest rates. For example, an increase in U.S. rates relative to the rest of the world um, leads to an increase in demand for U.S. deposits. Right? As a U.S. resident, I would like to keep my money invested in the U.S. because the rates are higher. If I happen to live in England, I may want to put my money in a bank in the U.S. because the rates are higher. In order to do that, I'm going to have to increase the, the uh, British person is going to have to uh, buy U.S. dollars and that's going to increase the demand for dollars, okay, or decrease the demand for the foreign deposits and the foreign currency. So as the demand goes down, the pound sterling depreciates or the dollar appreciates. So when the government, when the Federal Reserve, for example, in the U.S. raises interest rates, Oftentimes, that attracts capital into the U.S. and causes the U.S. dollar to appreciate. Relative income levels. An increase in U.S. income leads to an increase in U.S. demand for foreign goods, right? As U.S. residents become richer, they choose to buy more things, and some of those goods and services they buy will be from overseas. That means there's going to be a increase in demand for imports and they're going to need to increase their demand for foreign currency. Again, if they're going to buy uh, sweaters from Great Britain, they're going to have to convert their dollars into pounds sterling and that's going to increase the demand for pounds and that increase in demand is going to cause the pound to appreciate and the dollar to depreciate. All right, there are other factors. I'll just mention them brief, briefly here. Um, the government can influence exchange rates, imposing foreign exchange barriers, whether foreigners 
whether U.S. residents or domestic residents, for example, can convert their currency into some foreign currency, or whether foreigners can convert their money into the domestic currency. There can be trade barriers. For example, if a country imposes tariffs, that is, taxes on goods that are imported into the country, that's going to make um, the demand for imports lower and the demand for foreign currency lower and may strengthen the domestic currency's exchange rate. Um, foreign governments can also intervene in exchange markets. Okay, that's uh, a discussion for another place, but they may go out to buy foreign currency to prop up another country or buy their own currency using foreign reserves to prop up the domestic currency. So there are a lot of factors that can come into play. All right, finally, I found this nice um, little graphic here from Medora's book, and it breaks up these uh, factors that affect exchange rates into trade-related factors and financial factors. So inflation impacts our demand for buying foreign goods because the domestic goods are more expensive. Income differential, the wealthier, wealthier a country becomes, the more demand there is for uh, both domestic and foreign goods. Okay, trade restrictions, which I briefly mentioned. Um, the interest rate differential, higher interest rate in the U.S. makes it attractive for foreigners to invest in the U.S. and makes it less attractive for U.S. residents to invest their money ab abroad. You may have capital flow restrictions where you strict, restrict the amount of money that can leave the country or come into the country. And we didn't really discuss it, but there may be some exchange rate expectations. And these expectations may be based on what we think, you know, the domestic as well as foreign governments will do in terms of controlling inflation, in terms of trade restrictions, and other types of factors that could influence exchange rates. So I hope this provides at least a, a brief overview of how exchange rates are determined. Um, thank you for watching.